Good morning guys, this is Jim. Welcome back to the airplane shop. Um, this is a quick little update and I'm going to try to explain rivets and a few things, uh, just kind of tools and materials to, to help some of you guys that are kind of following along I guess and uh, but aren't familiar with the, the construction techniques. There's some stuff that's usable. Uh, I do a lot of other hobby stuff and I use some of these tools and techniques for other hobbies besides just building airplanes. Um, I've got the uh, fuselage on its side now. I got all of the rivets on the two side skins finished and uh, flipped it over on one side so I could do a few of them on the bottom. I'm actually at a point now where I've got to have somebody else to help me to because I can't reach them. Um, what I'm doing now, and you can see I've done the bottom skins. I don't know if that shows up very good, but uh, there's the rivets along the seam between the, the side skin, which is right here stops comes around this way and stops here and then this is the bottom skin on down this way but so i'm doing these uh, you do all the sides which is over here now or up here you do all the rivets and kind of work your way down around the sides and then start to do the bottom so now i've got to do this stuff here on back and i just can't reach clear around there i, I might be able to actually reach it but I, I can't see it well enough or hold the gun square so i've got to have a partner to help me rivet so that's where we're at, um, coming along. And for the uh, tools and materials, I had a question on one of the videos, and I know there's other guys, uh, local, some of my local buddies that are following, that uh, probably don't know what rivets are used for, or how, are, how I'm using them, um, or exactly how, how you do it. But uh, here's a, a box of the real common. This is all of the rivets here that uh, are through the skins. Most of these that you see here are skins skin rivets. They're real short, they're small, they're 332 and and I got a couple laying over here, then there's some longer ones. So those two trays are just various lengths of 332 rivet. There uh, with the penny in the middle for scale, uh, the one on the left, the biggest one is an eighth inch rivet. No, actually that's a, uh, shoot, what is that? I, I don't know. <laughs> it's up next, up, next one up from eighth inch. Um, there probably won't be many of these on this particular kit. These were rivets that I used when I built my six, and they were spar rivets. Um, so they're quite a bit bigger, and I actually had to do special technique uh, to, to use those. Um, but here's an eighth inch rivet, and it's eighth inch diameter, and I don't know how long that one is, probably a quarter inch. And then that one to the right is one of those that are on the skins here. Here's a, a tray of different dimple dies and flat sets that are used to squeeze rivets or to set dimples. And so all these skins were used, uh, were dimpled to allow it to be flush on the outside so that, that fits with these flush headed rivets. So th that's another difference I didn't point out there. Conventional or domed head and flush rivet. So it's a dimple or a countersink that that flush rivet goes into. Then you've got uh, Clecos and Cleco pliers. These things are kind of neat and this is what I was talking about that might be useful in other hobbies. I think maybe auto body guys use these in a few spots where they're uh, welding body panels together doing spot welds. You drill a hole and then this is a 332nd Cleco is what it's called. It's got a center uh, pilot I guess you'd call that and then those two teeth on the sides are what expands and kind of pulls the two sheets together. So if you drill two sheets, uh, put two sheets together, drill one hole through both of them, you can insert this through the hole and then when you let go of it, the spring tightens it up and pulls the two sheets together. So you gotta have this special pair of pliers that, that fits around it. And that's what uh, compresses the spring and then when you let go of it, 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 it pulls the parts together. And I'm riveting with a rivet gun. This is a conventional pneumatic rivet gun. This is a 3X, and the 3X means that's how, that, that's a scale or a, a measurement of the weight of the slug in there. It's kind of like a, like an impact wrench or like a, I don't know what else you compare it to, but it's got a hammer in there basically that's going back and forth really fast uh, by the air pressure. And the 3 means that it's, it's heavier than a 2X. And so you select that based on the, the material that you're working with. So 3X is probably just a little heavy for some of the 
the thinner skins applications on the airplane, but that's what I'm using, and it works. It's just a little bigger than it needs to be. Then I have various uh, bucking bars, that's what this is, and you hold this on the back side of the rivet, so to kind of set it up here without a skin in place, it would be hard, and I'm not, not really set up or intending to demonstrate this, but so you'd have the rivet gun, then you'd have a skin or a structure here, probably two pieces at least, and the actually the rivet and then the, the structure would be here and then the tail of the rivet would protrude through those parts and then you'd hold the bar up on the back side of it pull the trigger and then this is going to bang the head of the rivet and this is bouncing off the tail and that's called the bucktail of the rivet and that's what sets it um, sort of like if you have ever watched some of the old historical videos of guys setting, like building a bridge and they use hot rivets? That's the same process. This isn't hot, these are aluminum, so they're fairly soft to start with and as you hammer them, that makes them get harder as you hammer it. So that's part of the, the technique or part of what makes it work. Uh, but they're aluminum, so that makes them really light and it's also the same material so that you don't get any dissimilar corrosion problems. And over here I've got a cup of coffee and a pneumatic rivet squeezer. Um, this sort of does some of the same steps that the hammer does, but it just smoothly squeezes it. You put the different sets in here. This happens to be a, a deep flange yoke. There's no hole here, but you can, I've got other yokes that you can use. And then uh, you put whatever sets you want to in there. And you also use that to set dimples along edges of stuff. So. Um, kind of a rambling explanation. If anybody's got questions or, or uh, observations or anything about the, the process, whether you're uh, building one or just uh, curious as you're watching the videos, don't be afraid to ask. Leave a comment in uh, the video comments and I'll uh, try and get back to you. We'll see you next time.